Hello everyone. With all the talk about a banking crisis, everyone is asking about how banks work, and you may have heard the term fractional reserve banking. And you may not know what that means. Well, I'm Professor Capco, and I'm going to explain that in easy terms for you today. But first, I want to mention that I believe something great is going to happen for you today. Now, back to the video. This is the first of uh, the videos on the banking system that I'm doing. Uh, so if you would, please subscribe if you're interested in this type of material. And I'm going to give you some more information about this. All right, but let me explain what fractional reserve banking is. So this is going to be your bank. And to make it simple and easy, I'm going to use easy numbers. And we're going to simplify the explanation by pretending that everybody banks at the same bank. Of course, that's not the reality, but uh, maybe it will be down the road. So let's pretend that you're going to deposit $100 in your bank. And so we're going to have a list here of deposits. So you put that deposit into your bank account. So I'm going to list this deposit as 100 as most of you know, the bank doesn't take that $100 and stick it in a shoebox back in the vault with your name on it. That money is used again and again, and we're going to talk about how that goes about. They don't even just have it sitting in the vault mixed with other money and waiting for you. That money is actually put to work earning money for the bank, and that is partially how they pay interest uh, to their depositors in the event that they do pay any interest and it's also how they one of the ways that they generate profits so the you've deposited a hundred dollars in your bank fractional reserve banking um, legally requires the bank only to keep a certain amount of that deposit on hand and they can then use the rest of it so a common amount might be ten percent Sometimes it's more than that, sometimes it's even less. But for purposes of our demonstration, we're going to say that the law only requires 10% to be reserved. This set, this percentage in the United States is generally set by the Federal Reserve. You might have heard of it. The Federal Reserve sets that amount, um, but there's other legal requirements involved as well. Other countries do this and their central bank may set it, uh, so it, they also might use fractional reserve banking. So that means of this $100, they only need to keep 10% on hand, in other words, $10. So they're going to keep $10 at the bank and they're going to lend out the rest. So they're going to lend out $90 to some other customer. That $90 then goes into the economy, and let's say whoever um, that gets paid to then comes back to the bank. And like I said, we're going to use this one bank. We're going to pretend every banks, everyone banks at the same bank and deposits it back in the bank. So they deposit the $90 into the bank. Well, just as before, they're required to reserve only 10% of that, so that means they're going to keep on hand $9, and they're going to lend out the remaining $81. That $81 is lent out, earning interest. Whoever they pay it to, whoever they lent it to, then pays it to somebody who then comes back to the same bank and deposits it. They're going to deposit that $81 into this bank, and the fractional reserve of 10% means that they only have to keep on hand $8.10. And they can then lend out the rest of it, $72.90. Then gets lent out to yet <clears throat> another customer. That then gets paid out, and this process repeats itself on and on. That means that $72.90 gets deposited here. Of that, $7.29 is kept on reserve, and $65.61 is lent out. 
So as you can see, uh, this process can go on and on and on and is like an infinite money machine. So let's look at how much the bank has on deposit. So if we're going to add these up, we have customers that have deposited $100 plus $90 plus $81 plus $72.90. So that means that customers have on hand or have deposited $343.90 into this bank. Of that, the bank is lent out $90 plus $81 plus $72.90 plus $65.61. And that's all lent out. That means that $309.51 has been lent out and is earning interest for the bank, sometimes at very high rates. It could be mortgages, it could be credit cards, it could be invested in other things such as treasuries, things that are earning interest for the bank. And we, we can go into another video with more detail. However, let's look at how much the bank actually has on hand. We have $10 plus $9. You see how this is going, plus eight, 10 and 7.29. And the bank only has $34.39 on hand to cover the $343.90 deposited. Well, this could be a precarious situation. Of course, there's more than one depositor and they're working with more than $100 and the chances of everyone needing their money at the same time is low because lots of transactions occur while these transactions are maybe you're spending this money, others are depositing money. So it, it kind of flows. And of course, there's more than one bank, but we can talk about in another video what happens if everyone wants their money at the same time? You may have seen some stuff like this happening either in history or in recent news events. So having said that, this gives you an idea of what fractional banking is, fractional reserve banking is. And if you have questions about it, go ahead and post, post them down in the comments below. Share this with your friends who may not know how the banking system works. and if you found this helpful, please subscribe to my channel. It'll help me get this information out to others that will know then what is going on with their money and be able to best protect themselves. Of course, there's things such as deposit insurance and, and other things in place that might protect you, but it's important for you to know this. They don't teach this in school. Until next time, subscribe. Thank you.